Alrighty, friends, so let's see what the final product looks like, uh, both as a customer booking an appointment and as you seeing what that looks like coming in. Now, the first thing I want to point out, you'll notice uh, today is June 15th. Tomorrow, June 16th, I have nothing on my calendar for this particular business, right? There, there's nothing on it for this business. And if, I, if I go and look at my outlook calendar, uh, you'll notice the only thing that I have is this, uh, planning meeting from 10 30 to 12 30 tomorrow. So I'm going to book an appointment in the afternoon, but I just want to show you there's nothing here to start with. So how is this going to work, uh, for my customer? Well, it's going to start by me as the support person going to my booking page and, you know, maybe opening the page and somehow getting this link out to my user, whether it's a learning management system, whether it's an email blast, social media, whatever the case may be, um, that is what I want to use to get it there. And I might suggest that they bookmark this page to help make it, um, you know, easier for them to find in the future. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to use a different browser just to make sure there's no like confusion, um, when I, uh, book an appointment. So here I am in my personal email account. And as a customer, I'm going in and I can see that, you know, great. It's my virtual office hours. Uh, I'm going to select a 30 minute appointment and I'm going to do it for tomorrow. Like we said, the 16th. Now, the first thing I want to point out, you'll notice I said, I had that planning conversation from 10 30 to 12 30, and I can't book an appointment between the hours of 10 30 and 12 30 because it's already spoken for. It's not part of this business calendar, but because it's on my Outlook calendar, it knows I'm busy. It says, nope, can't schedule, which is really, really cool. Um, and if I wanted to do a one hour appointment, same thing, still can't book during that time period, but it's finding time periods that I can book that. So let's stay with the, the half hour, the 30 minute. I'm going to do two o'clock just for giggles. So two o'clock on the 16th for 30 minutes, uh, I need to enter in some information. So to avoid uh, possible confusion, I'm going to do sample customer here is the name and my email. I'm going to put in, like I said, my personal email. So that way you can see what that looks like. Uh, when you get the confirmation email sent, because that is a nice feature. Um, which district are you with? I'm going to say main Unwell for that one. And what would you like to talk about? I'd like to talk about Microsoft bookings. I already did this. I had to go back and refilm the video. Uh, so, but the idea is again, there's still no appointment already existing on my calendar. Uh, but as a customer, when I say book, it's going to do this little working on it. And then eventually this is where I didn't get to last time. Uh, Thank you for booking with us. You will get a confirmation message in your email shortly. So that's what your user sees. And if they click OK, here's the web page that the customer gets, right? They can reschedule, they can cancel the booking, they can make another booking. And if we scroll down, here is that link that we talked about for the personal meeting room. It's telling us when it is, all this awesome information happening. Now, in addition to this, the user is going to get an email and I'm going to give it just a second for that email to show up and then we'll pick the video back up then. All right. So I just got the notification that that email came in. So let me go over to my email for this account and see what we got. All right. So in this case, I can see I have two different emails. One is a, a calendar appointment where if I want, I can add this to my calendar, whether it's an Outlook calendar, Google calendar, whatever the case may be, it's sending me a calendar invite. And in addition to that, it's going to send me the actual, uh, along with the calendar invite, it's going to send me a little confirmation email where again, Here's the list to the personal meeting room. Here is that extra information. Uh, and I put some information in here regarding the waiting room. So just some, some different things that are happening. And that user can always go manage that booking if they need to change it for whatever reason. But this is the confirmation email that the user gets. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really sure why we get two emails. I get the, the calendar invite here and the calendar invite here. But you know what? I'll take that. And eventually, I'm going to find out how to change that and I'll make a video showing you how to do that. If you know, leave it in the comments, let me know. But let's head back over to my, uh, the owner of the business, if you will, like me, and show you what that's gonna look like from that side. When I head into my email, you'll notice I have some emails coming in. And one of them says, someone booked an appointment with you. So just like those other online platforms use, 
I can see that a sample customer has booked an appointment on Tuesday, June 16th. There's all the information I need. Basically, it's the same thing the customer gets, but it's notifying me that it's there. If I go and look at my calendar inside of Outlook, there is my office hours appointment on my office calendar. And if I head over to the bookings page, if I look on the calendar, we'll see there's now an appointment here. If I need to make changes, I can make changes anywhere and they'll be fine. Um, the easiest thing from here, I can edit or cancel the appointment if needed, but I would certainly, I would probably email the person. They'll also, your customer will get an email if you edit or no, um, adjust, cancel, whatever the appointment um, with that information there. So there you go. That's what it looks like from both the customer side and your side when you make an appointment with Microsoft Bookings. As always, if you have any questions on this or anything else instructional technology related, please feel free to shoot me an email at rbray at btboces.org. And here comes my shameless plug. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And you're welcome to subscribe to this channel to get updates and notifications when new content is posted. As always, thank you for watching.